Well, you said the uh, NR group. I'll just talk about now. Uh, my grandfather is the true entrepreneur. Okay, his Sri N Rangarao comes from a very humble background. If you look at his family history. you know it's either a purohit or a teacher you know his father was a teacher his grandfather was a purohit comes from a very very simple family he lost his father when he was just 10 years of age and he had to take care of his mother and grandmother throughout school he used to actually get himself opportunity to earn a livelihood he would go to the wholesale market buy sweets come and sell it to the shopkeeper outside and earn a living he would take tuitions to students to pay for the school fee he learned typewriting and taught he realized very early that to be competitive you need to be multi skilled and in those days learning shorthand and typing was very important so he made a deal with the typing institute because he couldn't afford to go to school he said listen i'll bring you five students you teach me the six person free and that's the first uh, sales promotion that he did you know um quite a lot of things he, he learned how to repair watches he solved crossword puzzles for senior citizens and that entrepreneurial spirit was always in him got married early in 1935 at my grandfather and grandmother and you know coincidentally when i grew up i used to call him factory appa and factory amma because they were living in the factory okay you know in each family you have a name for your grandparents and in my family it was factory appa and factory amma and, and what was the key challenges for him the ability to take a risk i was 36 years old four children india had just got independence the british had left he had got a full time job in polybatta but he decided to give up everything move to mysore follow his dream had the courage to start his own business in 1948 i think you know being courageous believing believing in yourself is one of the biggest learnings for us uh, you know as a group and as a family to be daring and and to not trust your instinct and gut and go ahead and do what is required and that sacrifice that is required to back up your dreams has to be there and that my grandfather was a true testament to that he always looked at global benchmarks he, he didn't just look at agarbatti businesses but he said you know which are the best businesses that i can aspire to look at and learn from so he was always open to learning look and and drew inspiration from multitude of functions and one significant learning ethical business practices was etched into the way we govern the business you know we have our accounts books from 1956 you'll be surprised to see that the tea expenses in the office where he drinks his tea is booked as a personal expense okay and he paid from his pocket for that and that's the level of you know integrity that the person has you know honesty is one thing but integrity is is is, is a level above and and that's what the company was built on key challenges he faced was you know he was alone he had to build a system and process he had to develop a core competence without any prior knowledge and that's when he realized that in agarbatti's fragrance creation is going to be the biggest biggest core competence and he built his own fragrance creative lab got books from france imported them waited for a year studied them and built his own fragrance creative lab started creating fragrances on his own and today that's one of the biggest innovations for us our fragrances have stood the test of time we are our own perfumers i am a perfumer myself apprentice my dad is a perfumer i have learned from him so we create our own fragrances and that's one of the biggest advantages we have in the export market as well as in the domestic market because we control what we create okay and that's one of our core competences and then he realized access to market is important so we need to be able to be close to the customer and give him products at the right time and so he started to innovate in distribution he invested in van sales started getting commission sales agents for the business created a sales sop document when it's it's inspiring to read the 19 pages that he has written for each and every sales person it's like a manual that you we can follow even till today it is timeless it is relevant for any person at any point of time and then he had the big challenge of nursing the second generation because he had seven children he had to take care of each one of them inspire them to come and join the family business right i mean these are few of the quotes that he had written this is in 1946 he writes after 10 years i hope to be in a big town or in a city getting a monthly income of at least rupees 200 either in some commercial concern as a paid employee running a business of my own i also hope to derive immense benefit from my son who i'm going to introduce to the commercial life it is my ambition that i should hold a capital which will yield an interest of at least about 150 per month within a period of about 12 years this is 1946 okay a person who has come from madurai district a village called markingote who last lost his father when he was just 10 years old a self made man right in 1946 before independence this is a, the the vision that he had about himself the fierce belief in himself that he had all right and this is what built the business for us 
1948 to 1950, this is where the factory and residence was. This was the place he came in and started the business. 1952, after he built the Fragrance Creative Lab. 1953, he won the gold medal for fragrance creation in the Mysore Dasara exhibition. 1950 to 60, this was the factory and the residence. This, are, this is my father, our uncle, the chairman, who actually sacrificed so much and joined the business. My auntie, the eldest aunt, Padma auntie, who actually was the first one who supported my grandfather in you know, making Agarbati. And if you can see, you know, at the back, you can see all the packing material and other things. So father still remembers that and after he came back home from school, he finished his homework and he would sit, you know, with the packing material and help his father and, you know, mother and, and elder sister and packing products and other things as well. And, you know, I talked to you about innovative distribution. He started van sales on his own. This was our factory from 58 to 75. And then this is something that he wrote in 1969. I think this is timeless. He said, you know, if I look at the last 20 years, then 1949 to 69, the top six guys don't exist today. And he articulates in his book about why they don't exist. And one of the fundamental things that he says is ethical business practices. Okay. And, you know, for me, right, one of the biggest opportunities of growth came when I came back from the US in 2000, I could go ahead and bring in technology. I could implement an ERP. I could start looking at data management analytics because we were a completely transparent and a compliant organization. So I never had to look at sitting behind the cash register to collect money, none of that. I could plan on scaling for growth, building people, all right, and getting opportunity from the market. And I think this is one of the key aspects that businesses need to understand if they need to scale is ethical business practices will take you way ahead of what you can imagine, far ahead of short-term benefit that you'll gain by you know, looking at uh, tax. This is our corporate